Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for May the 29th, 2017. This is the last one after today. The next one on Thursday, June 1st. It will officially be hurricane season in the Atlantic, and we'll change the intro slide and everything. Just, you know, wanted to point that out. A lot to talk about today, starting with the SOI, Southern Oscillation Index. Look at that. Positive 26.91 for today. Over the last several days since we last got together here, the 30 and 90 day averages have all taken big hits. And so the values have come up to near zero uh, or neutral. And so, you know, again, (laughs) if there's going to be an El Nino to affect this hurricane season, it better hurry up. Uh, This is literally like being down to you know, maybe uh, 90 seconds in a basketball game and you're down eight points and the other team has the ball. Uh, It's not looking good, put it that way. Uh, There could still be an El Nino that sets in, you know, before the end of the year, the calendar year, but I still do not see anything that leads me to believe that the tropical Pacific out here is going to be warm enough to create negative impacts for the Atlantic Basin over here. And uh, this particular chart that updated today, the anomalies map, you can clearly see the tropical Pacific here. uh, Really no significant departures from normal either way. Sort of a warm, neutral state overall. And the pressure pattern lately has been such that the trade winds have been strong enough to keep all of this in check. But the global models are indicating much higher pressure to build over Australia and lower pressure over here and that should flip the SOI around and maybe try to generate more westerly winds out this way but it'll probably be too little too late so oh well all right so zooming in on the anomalies look at the Atlantic Basin this uh, almost horseshoe shape here boomerang shape for now uh, continues to amplify the average sea surface temperature anomaly across this region continues to go up and it doesn't look like this is going to abate anytime soon Uh, and then you've got again this colder area uh, to the north of it it's it's just set up I mean what can we say we saw the NOAA forecast last week for an above average season and Phil Klotzbach and his team from Colorado State will be issuing an update on Thursday and I will be talking about that in Thursday's update and then of course Thursday night on the very special broadcast that I'm going to be doing. The subsurface, this is really amazing. Look at this. Very little overall in the Western Pacific at the subsurface in terms of uh, heat content or additional um, positive anomalies. It's just meager. There's nothing really there. And once this really starts to work itself out of the system, um, that's that's it. I mean, we're going to really get into, I mean, think about it. August is a little over 60 days away, and we are not going to change the state of this to the point where it would affect the hurricane season much, if at all, in 60 to 90 days, especially when you look at all of this in the western Pacific. If you develop another warm pool out here, it's going to take some time for it to, to do anything. I just don't see it happening. All right, so the actual temperatures, if we look at the Gulf of Mexico, I want to get rid of some of these windows here. Gulf of Mexico, pretty much everything except this blue color is 80 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. In fact, oh boy, it's hard to believe, 30 degrees Celsius down here. It's a small area, thank goodness. 30 Celsius off the Yucatan. That's really warm. We're talking about upper 80s. And boy, did you see about... If you follow Eric Blake on Twitter, he's one of the forecasters at the Hurricane Center, one of the specialists down there, and he was talking about how hot it was in Miami yesterday, upper 90s. I mean, you know, I know Florida is supposed to be hot, but man, Florida, for the most part, especially along the peninsula really, has really baked this year. Uh, You guys are going to be begging for, obviously, low impact wind and surge events but you need some rain and you need some cooler weather uh you need the rain seriously and you know it's ironic that 
a tropical cyclone might be the saving grace later in the year. Uh, who knows? Uh, of course, we got to be careful what you wish for. And, and in some cases, yeah, people do need the influences of the heavy rain from a tropical system. But unfortunately, you can't control the rest. But um, my point is, you, you know, you, you leave Miami and you go down to the Keys to cool off um, in the water. Not so much. I mean, I guess, I guess 86 degree, 87 degree water is a little cooler than 97 degree air temperature, right? But yeah, I tell you, looking off the East Coast, uh, this is, can, I just love this. I, I don't care. I do this another 20 years. And, hey, look, there's a Mickey Mouse right there, a hidden Mickey. <laughs> I just saw that. That's not what I was going to say, though. That's not what I love about this. Um, that is interesting, though. But look at this, just the the delineation here, this line of demarcation, if you will, the gradient between some of this water temperature up here is uh, you know close to freezing, just a few degrees above. And then right there, that little patch, I know it's a little patch, but you know that's 80 Fahrenheit, just a few hundred miles south of where the water temperatures are so cold that you would freeze to death in just a matter of minutes probably. And then, you know, farther to the south and west, look at that little tiny little area right there. That's 82 Fahrenheit or 28 Celsius trying to fill in the Gulf Stream here. Uh, water temperatures offshore of the Carolinas, very nice. Up along the mid-Atlantic mid states, New Jersey, down to Mar Maryland and Delaware, the Virginia Tidewater area. Uh, obviously warmer here than up here. These are still in the 50s, but it's getting there. So if you've been spending Memorial Day uh, down at the beach and you found a place to park <laughs> in New Jersey, then the water temperature was very chilly. So if you live in Florida, go up to New Jersey and go to the beach there. How about that? That's, that's some sage advice for you. Now this is interesting. I want to start showing this more and more. I'm going to get away from sort of worrying quote unquote about El Nino and we will migrate into talking about you know, your actual temperatures of things and uh, other aspects of what drives hurricanes. And part of that is the upper ocean heat content, or what we call tropical cyclone heat potential over here. And this shows us how deep that 80 degree line runs. What's the depth of the warm water? Uh, because the deeper the warm water extends, the more upper ocean heat content there is for a tropical system to take advantage of. And when you start to see it filling in like this, even these bottom of the scale colors, you know, that's getting there. That's showing that there's a little extra energy, and in some cases, like here, a lot more energy. And of course, this will continue to expand. But I just wanted to show you this, introduce it to you today. We're going to be looking at this more often, um, probably every week or so. And when something does form, you remember last year, Matthew, once the tropical wave got itself over to this area that w that became Matthew, it really blossomed and took advantage of very high ocean heat content across this area, and it became a Category 5 uh, for a brief time. So this will be something that we talk about quite often, as well as this. And I couldn't believe this when I saw it. What is this? Well, this is the simplest way to describe it, is the instability of the atmosphere over the tropical Atlantic. What is instability? Well, it's the ability of the atmosphere to become unstable. That's one way to put it. And furthermore, it, it's sort of a, a way for the atmosphere to produce convection. A stable atmosphere uh, is usually capped, or there's drier air, etc., especially drier air, and that does not allow for much instability. Uh, if you have warm air uh, over the colder air or warm air over warm air, for example, that's a stable atmosphere. So the Atlantic, tropical Atlantic instability is a big driver in what happens between, uh, go back to this slide, this area right out through here, the main development region. And so when it's stable out there, stable atmosphere, you don't get much in the way of activity. These tropical waves come off. And they stay very anemic until they get farther to the west, perhaps. And that's what we've seen for the last several years, for the most part. And 
that's because the instability has been really low all hurricane season long. It's looked like this for the most part. I, I, I couldn't find any archives of this to show you. But this is absolutely remarkable considering where we've been. And that is, look, we're right where we should be as we almost get to June here. The instability is right on the money. In other words, it's neither below normal, uh, and it's actually been above normal just a little bit as of later, above climatology, and that's this line. This is where it should be as we progress through the months, and this is the observed conditions. And so if you've been following and you know these hurricane patterns the last few years, that right there, folks, for the tropical Atlantic is a huge signal. Now, can this kind of go and fall off like this for the rest of the year? I guess. But why would it when you've got the strong anomalies like we see out here? All this warm water, yeah, that might be doing something. And so we'll see. So that's a huge, huge thing right there. We'll be watching that close. Anything brewing anytime soon? Nope, probably not. Strong westerly winds still dominating for the most part coming across the tropics. And so anything uh, coming westward would run into that. And it's still, you know, just about early June, so we really don't expect much anyway. And if we do, it's more than likely going to be this area, climatologically speaking. But as I you know, showed you there, these little wind barbs are showing us that the upper level winds are cutting across and we don't have any large area of divergence aloft in a clockwise fashion or upper air high pressure. And so really not going to have anything develop. There's a little tropical wave going through here. And this is interesting. We had this large complex of storms that moved off the Texas coast. Now this might try to feed back some over the warm waters of the Gulf and become a very ugly sheared mess that brings a lot of rain to parts of Texas. So it's something to watch, but and the, the global models are off and on with trying to develop but there's really no, the Madden-Julian oscillation is not favorable. Um, in other words, if this develops, it's going to do so in the face of rather hostile conditions and would be much more of a rainmaker than anything else. Uh, that being said, you hear me talk about rainfall a lot. And if you dump a lot of rain across this area, it could be problematic. So we'll keep an eye on this, and I'll talk about it again on Thursday. Uh, when I do another update then. Speaking of stable air, would you just look at that? <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, there's no way we're going to get any hurricane development over here as long as we see that. So let's just say that something developed down here and moved up towards this area. And unless this changes, it's just going to die out. It's really amazing. Let's go right back to the anomalies map. Look off the coast of Mexico, the Baja, etc. You have some pretty cold anomalies there. And that too is very, very interesting because we usually look for activity. You remember the last few years, these tracks have just been all out through here and not necessarily over Hawaii, but you know, this is where a lot of the development has been. And not this year, not yet anyway. So, you know, I look at that and I see this stratocumulus, uh, cover uh, you just know there's not going to be any development and if you look at the intertropical convergence zone it's flat so boy the Atlantic you would just think unless the tropics as a whole if something's wrong and we're just not going to get development anywhere I would think that the one place that we'd be looking this year where the heat in the ocean is concentrated the most it looks like compared to average is the Atlantic Basin. I mean, it's going to be warm enough out here for your typhoons and such, but relative to average, this looks like the hot spot. Will that end up the way it is? We'll have to wait and see. I'm going to talk about it in detail on day one. That's Thursday, coming up June 1st, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, YouTube Live and our Facebook Live. So if you are not following or subscribed on YouTube, do so now. And on Facebook, you got to make sure you engage or comment or like or something. It's the way their algorithms work. I don't know. But, you know, you want to be notified when we do something live. So be sure to enable those notifications in your apps or whatnot. And, uh, or just tune in. Make sure you're, you know, at 
facebook.com forward slash hurricane track that's our location there and the youtube channel at hurricane track as well and uh, seven o'clock eastern if you can't make it it will be archived and i'll edit it down you know the front and the back just to make sure it's nice and trimmed and ready to go then i'll put it up forever and ever and that's again this thursday at seven uh, we'll talk about our evolution of the equipment that we use and how we do field coverage take a look at the forecast for the uh, season ahead at some of the major agencies and a couple of even lesser known entities and then a few tips like i said from my experiences in hurricanes uh, that can hopefully help you not make the mistakes that i've seen people make in the past that's all coming up this thursday and then it's on the 183 or 184 days or whatever it is of hurricane season it's six months long june 1st through november 30th uh it'll be upon us day one thursday what will the last day be like november 30th what will we be talking about then interesting isn't it to think all those months and all that could happen and it all begins thursday Thanks as always for tuning in. I'm done for now. Have a great rest of your Memorial Day and a big serious thank you to those who gave everything to allow me to be able to do what I want to do with my career, so to speak. This is just one of the freedoms that we have because of the men and women who have given their lives, and that's why we remember them this Memorial Day uh, because of what they've done for the United States, and I appreciate it, as does my family. Uh, a lot of the older generations of my family served. Luckily for us, none were killed in combat, but I do appreciate it very much, and that comes from the bottom of my heart. As do I appreciate the fact that you tune in to check out what I've got to say. And with that being said, I'm out for now, and I'll be back on Thursday, MarkSuddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again in a few days.